So I want to thank everyone for attending our uh, uh, session today, uh, where we're going to be introducing uh, a new Ascend courseware produced by myself and Heather Adams. Um, it's the introduction to vehicle tracking. The official title is Autodesk Vehicle Tracking Fundamentals 2021. So in this, ca uh, in this webcast, we'll be uh, introducing the new courseware. Uh, and we'll be looking at some exercises as well for uh, vehicle tracking. Uh, this is, these are exercises directly out of the data set where we will be doing some swept path analysis, uh, parking layouts, and roundabout designs. There is more to this course. There's more to uh, audit vehicle tracking, but I think the time permitting, we only have time for uh, these three sample exercises. And without further ado, I would like to introduce us to the Autodesk Vehicle Tracking 2021 Fundamentals courseware that is, I believe it's live now. Um, if not, it will be live very shortly, but I think it's been released already. It is. Yes, it is. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, so uh, the Ascend courseware in general, uh, it's divided uh, to two major sections. So every chapter has a lecture part to it and uh, some exercises. And for the lecture uh, lecture parts, we break them down into chapters and into sections uh, very logically. Uh, we have figures throughout the book uh, and each figure is uh, referenced to a figure number within the text so it's easily identifiable. We have itemized components uh, within the lecture parts, uh, very detailed as to what is in particular user interface or what the user can actually expect. We have screen captures throughout the book uh, about the user interfaces and a variety of dialog boxes. And for our exercises, there uh, we really try very hard to make them very clear and precise. We start off with learning objectives as to what you are going to be learning in this particular exercise. We have an estimated time of re uh, required to fulfill this exercise. We've got uh, instructive diagrams of the data set itself. We have step-by-step -step instructions for as we go through the exercise. And finally, we have uh, figures that are intuitively referenced, very similar to the uh, lecture part that is out also throughout the exercise. So for the step-by-step -step instructions, uh, it's you know five, six, seven, and uh, again we take uh, a lot of we we take advantage of the figures within the book and reference them. Uh, the screenshots are of the actual uh, what's happening on the screen so the students can follow along making sure that they are where they're supposed to be. And we have also a variety of screenshots of the various dialogue boxes that the uh, student will en encounter as to what needs to be filled out where to make sure that they're still on track, uh, pun intended. Uh, so we're going to start off with the sample exercise now of the uh, swept path analysis. And what swept paths are within the Autodesk vehicle tracking is basically the extent or the envelope of the vehicle that we've chosen uh, to see how it navigates around the site. So it's more than just the actual uh, track that the tires take it goes to the extent of the uh, of the vehicle. For example, the front end bumper uh, will that uh, will that make it across a particular curb cut? Or if I have a semi with a trailer on it, how will that uh, how will that navigate? So I'm going to jump over to the demonstration. Uh, I want to point out that uh, vehicle tracking works in uh, AutoCAD. 
so that you see that this is AutoCAD 2021 and I have my vehicle tracking uh, uh, tab here. And just to point out that uh, there are some exercises that are just specifically working with Civil 3D and these are very well marked within the book. And for example, when I go to my drawing settings, this is regular AutoCAD now. And I go to my roundabouts for my drawing settings. There's very little in this uh, in this particular section. The reason is that this is in AutoCAD and within Civil 3D, when we look at that, there's going to be a lot more within the roundabout section. So I'm just going, I'm going to do, be doing all my exercises in Civil 3D. Um, and so if I go over to Civil 3D, in Civil 3D, I'm working with a white background with a, uh, a lighter interface, primarily because when I use my screen captures for the courseware, I want them in, uh, in a white background. So I've just become accustomed to working with Civil 3D in a white background. Uh, vehicle tracking also works in terms of, uh, it works with AutoCAD architecture as well as AutoCAD Map 3D and AutoCAD Plan 3D. But I'll be doing all my exercises in Civil 3D. So here we are in Civil 3D 2021. And if I go to my drawing settings here, just as we did earlier with, uh, with AutoCAD, you see everything is quite similar, although uh, now that we're in Civil 3D, we have a corridor section. Uh, corridors are an integral part of Civil 3D. They're a Civil 3, 3D object uh, that AutoCAD itself uh, does not have. And then we have our road mappings that we had in AutoCAD. So, um, and as I mentioned earlier, throughout the book, uh, there are some exercises where you do require Civil 3D, but most of the exercises, I would say about 80% of the exercises can be done with regular AutoCAD or AutoCAD architecture, AutoCAD map, or Plant 3D. Okay, so this is for our uh, wind uh, swept path analysis. And basically our mission is to go from point A to point B. And uh, the, uh, vehicle tracking is a ve has a very extensive library. They have an ex a library for vehicles, a library for parking standards, and a library for uh, roundabouts. So if I examine the, and this is the first time I'm loading it, so it's loading up the library. Uh, and this is examining the library that's within the, for the vehicles. And this does look completely overwhelming. However, you can configure vehicle tracking to uh, eliminate, if for example, I do not do any design in for, uh, for check or for, uh, Norway, I can, I'm just picking on some randomly. I can eliminate these uh, in the vehicle tracking uh, uh, configuration uh, so that these don't show up. So we have our design vehicles, USA. We have our Astro statewide, uh, various uh, uh, years for the Astro. Uh, publications and they're either in metric or in US. And I have all these different vehicles available to me. Uh, I can see them in my, uh, I can see them in my, my diagram over here. And I can also view the various turning radius that are set up within the, uh, within the different catalogs. I can't edit these directly. If I do want to edit one, I have to first make a custom library. So down here I have a library for my webinar, and then I can edit a copy of this 
and make various configuration changes to this particular bus uh, in my in my library. In my library itself, I can create a new vehicle uh, from scratch, or I can take an existing vehicle and make a copy of that. I should point out that within the book, we don't get as deep as to how to, uh, as I mentioned earlier, whittle these down. So only our, uh, the vehicles that you want would show up in this, but that is clearly outlined in the help section of the vehicle tracking. So what I want to do, uh, let's bounce back again. I want to make the bus, the city bus, uh, my, uh, my current library, uh, my current bus, my current vehicle. So I'm going to click on click, uh, make this as my default. Now, when I go to my uh, uh, swept path analysis, it's for under swept paths. It's asking me, it's already coming in with the bus that I that I picked earlier. It's asking me for my start point and the uh, bearing that it takes. So this is the direction that it's going to start in. Now, if I wanted to, I could change my vehicle in this uh, position vehicle, go back to the library, I'm going to leave it the way it is. And if I wanted to, it's kind of hard to see, but I could actually change my uh, bearing radius, uh, my turning radius of the car, uh, of the vehicle to start off with. Uh, by default, it's starting off with the wheels going straight. I'm gonna click proceed. Now I must say that even though I've uh, studied this extensively and I've practiced, and I'm a pretty good driver, uh, actual driver, <laughs> not a very good driver in this vehicle tracking. Uh, I don't know why it is, but basically every point that I pick is a point about where I want to start uh, steering my uh, steering my bus. So let's say I need to start turning here and come over and so as you see here we do see the uh the swept path being uh, uh joining us not joining being displayed so let's say i need to probably turn the bus here again and once more and you also see the arrow as to where it's pointing and it gives me a percentage of the uh of the steering that's going on so I'm just going to follow along my path. You see, uh, maybe I need to go here. Now, if I come up here and I pick the wrong point, I can always come down here. There is a way of hovering over that this X that, that I just generated, and you see a uh, red square there. That's going to delete that point. However, uh, if you don't quite pick it, then you get another point and then it becomes very erratic. So we kind of recommend that you go on your command line and remove last. So that just allows me to repick this point. Yeah, you see, uh, go up a little bit further. Okay, here we go. On this one, I didn't uh, straighten it out enough, so I need to pick another point in here. But I'll also show you later, and this will be my excuse, how to edit the path. So I don't need to be perfect the first time around because I certainly am not. Come to here, and we wanna come up to this uh, hotel.
Okay. And then I double uh, click and then I hit enter to finish my command. Oh, by the way, uh, if if there's any Revit users here and have taken our, our Revit courses, one thing that I did is I started to uh, bring in the uh, hotel building footprint from the architecture course, the uh, school footprint from our MEP course, and the office footprint from our uh, Revit structure course. Little bit of trivia here. So now uh, if I hit escape, uh, I do have my swept path, and you see that uh, the red is the actual uh, tire tracks, and the green is the swept path. So right here, I, I, if that curb is a little bit too high, that city bus might might hit it. I can uh, click on the the track again, and it's all one object. And then I, uh, where my targets are, they're marked with an X, I can move my targets around. So make it uh, a little bit better. And I can, wherever there's a plus, I can insert a new target. So I want to put a new target in here. When I uh, select the path again, I just escaped out of it. I can place a diagram. And this gives me the specs of the uh, bus that I'm using, the overall length uh, and a little diagram thereof. I can also insert a profile. Uh, Vehicle tracking is written, was written, developed over in uh, England, and they have some strange terms. Uh, it takes us a while to get used to these terms. Uh, for example, reports uh, is used in, in different, uh, reports is actually a report for my parking that we'll look at later on. But a report is also uh, how this particular, uh, path is being shown as to the color of the uh, extent of the path is is green, the wheels are orange. That's another report setting, report in quotation marks. Um, this is my report wizard. And that goes through each, each one of these as to uh, Am I showing the uh, body of the chassis, uh, my body, the chassis, uh, the profile, and any one of these I can change my colors in. So these are report settings, which we look as styles within Civil 3D or regular settings within AutoCAD. But what I wanna do is I wanna insert a, uh, Here it is, place outline. And what the outline is, is of the bus itself. So I can click anywhere and it's gonna place my bus there. And I can place as many uh, outlines as I need. And what do I wanna see within this? Do I wanna see the outline, the chassis, any type of symbols, some annotation itself? So that's the uh, uh, brief introduction to the uh, swept path analysis. I'll just give you a little uh, closed AutoCAD. No, AutoCAD is still there. Okay. So in this particular one, this is a little bit deeper. Uh, it's simply not going from A to B, but it's going to A to G. And within that, there's a variety of steps, again, outlined very carefully as to uh, what needs to be, to be done at particular steps. And the mission here is that we're doing this, I think we're doing it with the passenger car, but uh, uh, then we could change it with a uh, 
with the tractor trailer and to see if this tractor trailer from uh, point G can back into these loading bays successfully. Another exercise is using uh, this uh, train track here and to see if my uh, tram, again, a British term, or a, which is a streetcar, will make it through this particular loop without, uh, with the different radius that's allowed. A little spoiler alert, it doesn't make it, it hangs up right here, and then we will correct that to make sure that it follows all the way through. All the way through. Okay, so let's go back to our PowerPoint here. So uh, the uh, parking part, uh, again, vehicle tracking is broken into three main sections, swept path analysis, uh, parking, and roundabouts. We are now in the second part, which is uh, the, for parking layouts. And as we saw earlier, uh, within the vehicle tracking vehicle library, we do have a library for parking standards as well. So we can pick these parking standards that, that we want to work with uh, and which control the uh, standard bay widths, the driving aisles, etc. And we can lay out uh, the parking very quickly and then we can edit these options uh, as well and finally come up with reports as to what this particular parking layout, how many parking stalls it will hold. Let's switch back to Civil 3D. I'm going to close out of this. So the way the uh, data set is, is set up, uh, we create our parking lots and typically, uh, you can go through the entire exercise, uh, creating the exercise and then editing your creations. Or if you kind of went off on your own tangent for a while or you don't feel quite comfortable, you can open up the next drawing, uh, which is uh, where everything is already set up for you and you can continue on with the exercises for editing the parking lot. And then we also have the final product for uh, what it should actually look like. And you'll find that throughout uh, the data sets. So we're going to start with uh, creating the parking lot. Now, uh, in the book, I tell you how to change. Well, I'll, I'll explain that in a minute. Uh, Um, some of the, the parts within the parking lot come out in a blue color and they're very, very difficult to see in a black background. So in the book, I tell you how to change your uh, report in quotation marks again uh, for the settings to lighten up those particular blue points so they'll show much better on a, on a black background. Um, so for the parking lot, again, we have parking standards. Um, and we can pick which parking standard we want. If I don't pick them here, I'm just going to close out of this. So I just wanted to show you what that actually is. But if we don't want that, when I start a uh, new row for my parking, it's asking me for the uh, uh, parking standard name. And uh, this is the this is the standard that that uh, that we just picked uh, that is from that library that we looked at earlier. So the title for this parking standard is ascent. And I have the choices of uh, what type of bay alignment I want, be it back-to-back uh, -back or staggered. I can do it for my left side, both sides, or my right side. In this case, we want to work on our right side. 
and what my uh, starting number is for this parking stall. We're going to start at zero. And it's asking me uh, for my start point. I'm just going to set my uh, O track to be for my center. And this is all spelled out step by step within the courseware itself. Oh, one thing I wanted to point out too is uh, we we use these views throughout. Let me just close out of this. So throughout our courseware, Civil 3D and AutoCAD and uh, this vehicle tracking, we make extensive use of these views. So it tells us to go to uh, the parking one and it zooms right into that particular section. So let's go back to our new row here. So it's asking me for my start point, change my O-snap just to center itself, and I'm going to turn on my O-snap. So I simply go from A to B. Oh, wait, this is right only. And you see that it uh, goes in straight segments. Later on, we'll look at how to make these, uh, change these to curved segments. And hit enter. Okay. Now these, uh, these are what I'm talking about, these blue dots here. So if I hit escape to deselect my uh, parking lots, these small little blue segments, you would not be able to see those in a black background. Therefore, I say, you know, this is what you can do to change that. So these become, I think, light green. I make them depending on the background that you work with. I'm just going to take this uh, parking element and I'm just going to send it to the back. Because, and uh, I also have my uh, selection cycling set so that I can see objects on top of each other. Because now what I want to do is I want to go into a parallel row, parallel row. And this is going to be for both sides. And this is why I needed to change this to the front. And I'm going to select my line. So now that puts in this parallel row. And with these blue lines, we see the uh, uh, the width of the aisle that's required for a, uh, and that, that's why I'm going to align it with these blue dots that I was talking about earlier to have this as a two-way uh, parking line. Now it's asking me, even though I said both sides, I can specify either one side or the other or both. So I'm going to have this set to both. And I'm going to make one more uh, parking row, parallel row here. Now it already remembers that uh, the last one that I did, so it's presuming that this is the one that we want to use. And I'm going to line up these dots again. And again, I'm going to pick both rows. Now we have these grips throughout. So I'm going to shorten this stall. You see these blue dots coming down through here. So I'm going to shorten this stall. So the, uh, no, that's the wrong group with my square grip. So it comes down. I may want to turn on my ortho. And throughout the course, we have these uh, tips of, you know, quick ways of turning on your ortho or when that should be turned on. And slide the bottom one up. Not going to go through the entire exercise. Uh, these grips here, this one allows me to change. Oh, let me show you over here. Change the angle of my uh, of my island. Uh, individual sizes, uh, individual sides, different angles. Or if I click on this one, I click the inner one and that's gonna change the overall angle for both of them. 
Now I have various editing tools available for me. I can edit the uh, entire row. I can edit an, uh, just an individual uh, parking bay or the island itself. So I'm going to go to my uh, parking bays, select the row that I want. I get a variety of uh, squares in the middle. And if you, you have to look carefully, but if you hover over one, it turns uh, orange. So this is the bay that I want to edit. And I want to make this a make that accessible. Mm, why did that not work? There it goes. Okay. Um, these different uh, base styles, we can configure them for accessible or maternity or young mother or whatever you want. We can have a variety of different styles uh, to set up for our different uh, uh, styles. And then I can produce a report for this. Uh, where's my parking report? So this is actually a, a real report. So it's telling me the amount of stalls that I have. And I can customize this as to what I actually want shown. Okay. So let's go back to our PowerPoint. So for roundabouts, um, roundabouts can either work in 2D or in 3D. If you have civil, I mean, if you have civil 3D, you can design them in 3D or 2D. If you do not have civil 3D, if you just have AutoCAD or AutoCAD architecture, et cetera, then you're limited to 2D. We have exercises for both, and the 3D exercise is very clearly marked that this will only work with civil 3D. Um, there is also a ground clearance that you can do. So not only can you check to see if uh, the vehicle will uh, pass in 2D in plan around the various uh, obstacles, we can, if you have a surface, then you can also see if there's enough ground clearance for uh, vehicles or will they actually scrape the floor as, it, as they go over the different terrains. And for this ground clearance, you require civil 3D uh, that actually can produce uh, surfaces. So uh, for roundabouts, uh, again, it works with a particular library and we can do the preliminary layout for the roundabout geometry. We have a slew of options available as to what is to be included with the roundabout. Uh, and there is a, uh, as I mentioned, we can explore multiple design solutions, either in 2D or in 3D. So let's go back to Civil 3D here. So here we have to create the roundabout with a corridor or without a corridor. We'll start with the corridor. And again, we have these different views set up to point us in the right direction. So we go to uh, roundabout. And so here we have uh, civil 3D corridors uh, running north and south and east and west. I did put a break in the corridor so that we have our part for our uh, roundabout. 
And this roundabout is actually nothing but a, an XREF that has been uh, referenced in. Excuse me, my need to refresh my voice for a minute. Okay. Um, so this is tentatively how we want the roundabout to work, but uh, I can tell you that there's no way a roundabout could fit in this. <laughs> so let's go to our vehicle tracking and we have our uh, roundabout standards designers. And uh, within the uh, ASHTO uh, US uh, settings, we have uh, mini roundabouts, uh, rural double lane roundabouts, uh, triple lane roundabouts, urban roundabouts, double, single, uh, so we have a wide variety of roundabout designs uh, that we can that we can work with. I could go to proceed and would start directly with my roundabout design. However, I'm just going to click on close and I'm going to go to add my roundabout. These are the drawing settings that come up. Uh, So we're just going to have this set for uh, for a scale of one to one. I'm going to call this one Jeffrey's Ranch. Ascent Boulevard. I do want to calculate my elevations. Again, this is within Civil 3D. Uh, how many uh, circular lanes want that do we want? We picked it from the uh, standards that we were just looking at as a single lane, so it already knows that it's supposed to be one lane. Uh, and because this is Civil 3D, we want to tie it into my uh, existing surface, which is uh, existing site and my final surface. What happened here? Strange. A little snafu. Not quite sure what happened here. Uh, final surface. Oh, I know what happened. I picked on this uh, pick from drawing rather than my my down arrow. Apologize. Uh, final site. So I'm calculating my elevations and I gave it my two surfaces. Now it's looking for the uh, I'm going to go to intersections. It's looking for the center of my roundabout. I could go to intersections or center. Now it's looking for the first lane. And because I'm picking this alignment here, it knows the, the alignment name and it already puts in Jeffrey's Ranch Road. I'm just going to uh, put in where it's coming from. So this is east. And my uh, width coming in is 15.5. That's for my incoming lane and for my outcoming lane, outgoing lane <laughs> is 15.5. It's asking me for my second arm. Again, it recognizes that this is Ascent Boulevard. And I'm just going to tell it that this is from the north. Same lane width, 15.5. My third, Jeffrey's Ranch Road West. And finally, my fourth lane, Ascent Boulevard North. Okay. 
it's not north, that's south. Okay. There is no more, uh, no more arms coming into this. So just hit enter. Now it's going to take a while. Blue spinning box because it's performing a lot of calculations because it's actually building corridors as well. You see these for, for every quadrant, uh, there's this uh, diagram in the midst of the, of the drawing. These are known as head, head up displays. And uh, so the tip, the trick is we now have a roundabout object and civil 3D corridors. And depending on which one I pick is uh, which uh, context sensitive tab becomes available. So when I click on this, you see that it's actually the corridor, it picked the corridor. Uh, and I could do all my, let me just close out of this for a minute here. Make room for those, uh, there we go. Um, if I, if however, I click on one of these heads up displays, then I get my roundabout. Uh, context sensitive ribbon. And uh, if I go to my roundabout reports, uh, roundabout properties, these are all the different uh, options that I have within my roundabout. Depending on, you know, I have my, my general, uh, my preferences, and then these are the four arms that I have that I, the way I named them earlier. And each one of these, I have a uh, nice little display over here as to what we're actually talking about. So I can add my uh, splitter islands. I can add crosswalks if I wanted to. Uh, I can work on my exit or my entrance. And I have all these different values over here as to, uh, what I need to change. So it's very extensive. Just gonna close out of that. Okay. So the trick is if I want to work on the roundabout object itself, I I can try to click on any of these uh roundabout objects, but a surefire way is to click on one of these heads up displays. These heads up displays are uh, dynamically linked. So if I edit my roundabouts, these values will change. So let's just go to the uh, 2D layout. Getting a little bit short on time here, so I'll quickly uh, go through this. And it's very, very similar except it's in some ways much simpler. I'll go to my vehicle tracking, add roundabout. In this case, uh, let me cancel out of this. I'm going to come to my settings and for my roundabouts, I'm not going to create, uh, a lot, create alignments. I'm not going to create corridors. This is the way standard AutoCAD would work. I'm just going to leave it as the defaults. Again, I don't need to uh, supply any surfaces and I don't want to calculate my eleva uh, elevations. Okay. Mm, I think I picked the wrong point there. OK. 
Okay. So this is my first lane, 15.5. Now you notice that it doesn't, since I just picked a line, it doesn't fill in anything automatically. And I should be calling this actually the the name that it uh, of the road coming in. So I can easily identify it later on with my in my properties, but I'm running out of time here. And be whistling the Jeopardy tune while I'm doing this. Now I have my four arms in there, hit enter, and now it uh, completes it. And uh, this is basically a 2D layout of my uh, roundabout. I can still change it like I did last time. and add as much uh, as much detail as I want to it. Okay, I'm going to go back to my PowerPoint here. So we had a uh, introduction to the our new course, Autodesk Vehicle, Vehicle Tracking 2021 uh, Fundamentals course. We looked at uh, sample exercises for the swept path analysis, for parking layouts, and for roundabout designs, both in 2D and 3D.